We're excited to be here at Open Banking Expo and really looking forward to hearing from the industry players about what's next now that we're beyond compliance in the UK. So listening to the banks and the major fintechs and the, the key service providers as to where their focus is going to be going into 2020. Um, I think you know, we're going to be hearing a lot about uh, how we drive customer adoption and in order for that to really take off, we're going to have to make sure that the end user experience is, is, is really performant. And so themes around securing the open banking process and creating a really robust and resilient infrastructure that it can rely on are, are going to be key, both in the retail space for consumers, but also interestingly into the corporate space. So Equinix is the global leader in um, data centers. We operate co-location and interconnection services and across our global platform we have over 1,250 financial services companies. And we hear from them on a daily basis that they're looking to expand their ecosystems and clearly open banking is a key part of that. So we're interested in, in understanding who our customers need to connect to, what technology partners, what fintech partners, and bringing them together in a, in a performance secure environment um, that combines both the legacy technology platforms of the incumbents, plus the cloud native environments of the fintech players that are bringing innovative solutions to the market. So um, we're uh, effectively acting as a bridge between the old and the new worlds to enable the new generation of banking and payment services, uh, including in open banking. That's an interesting question. Um, Equinix is a global player, and so we see different trends emerging in the different regions we play in, across the Americas, across um, EMEA, and over into Asia Pacific. Um, the drivers for open banking are different here. It's a very compliance-driven, along PSD2 regulation, um, and in other territories, it's more um, driven by the industry itself as a strategic advantage, something that they actively want to pursue to differentiate themselves um, in the banking sector, for example. So we see some really interesting initiatives popping up in the US. Um, I think Asia is a key market for seeing a lot of the innovation, particularly given the digital adoption at the consumer level. So. Um, so yes, it's, it's an interesting worldwide picture, but I think um, every region is learning from each other. I'm sure there's many predictions out there in terms of what we might expect in 2020. Um, I think we're going to see continued investment in enhancing the existing platforms in the banking sector. There's still a way to go in terms of managing the, the massive data that our incumbent banks hold. And once that is manage then we can start to see interesting use cases around data analysis so artificial intelligence and machine learning so i think that will be a key topic for the banking sector and that will continue to push into cloud adoption um, and then i think in the fintech space we're already seeing some interesting use cases for open banking but for me the real ones to watch will be in the corporate and the sme space to see how that um, innovation really plugs into production environments and how corporates can really start leveraging the data and the insights that, that the sector can offer them.